welcome back to my channel guys welcome back to another video if you are new here please hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date with all of my videos and if you're returning uh, sorry today's story time i mean you guys can see by the title what the story time is gonna consist of so honestly like let's just get like straight into it shall we um y'all i've honestly been like putting off doing these story times because well the next few videos that i have planned for you guys because i've just moved on like uh, god is just working on me so intensely right now and i just i'd be not in the mood to talk about these things or like when i am in the mood i might feel like some sort of like anger or resentment towards these people but um yeah i just need to get it over and done with so i can like update you guys with like real current life like what's going on so obviously this is a story time about how i got jumped and robbed on christmas oh, oh, oh. it was a cold winter's night obviously this was december 25th <laughs> i went down south to um get my daughter because i recently moved and um i mean that's a whole nother another 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 thing my daughter's father knew that like i was gonna come he knew in advance but this man likes to this man is just very miserable um he likes to just play games when it comes to her so yeah uh, it was an issue when i got there so i went down there to get my daughter to spend christmas with my uncle and my aunt and just um, my cousins and so you know it was just gonna it was supposed to be like super duper exciting and I mean I felt like all the odds were already against me just because at this time I did not have a car right I was supposed to get a rental me getting the rental was just such a heartache and just such an issue like I literally booked an appointment I booked a reservation to pick up this vehicle and when I went to go pick it up they're like oh no you have to make it like you have to make it like two days in advance and we need this and it's this like and we don't even have this car so it was just a whole bunch of issues I literally went to like eight different rental places um all over just to try to get a rental car and nothing went through like I even found this one rental place like when all my options were like extorted and it ended up being someone's house and mind you like i told you i did not have a car i don't know nobody so i'm literally ubering to these places and getting dropped off and like when they're telling me like oh they're full they don't have any more cars i'm just like they're like what you know gotta order another uber so i get dropped off at this place and it's a someone it's someone's house and like off rip, like I'm like, okay, this definitely is not a car dealership, although there was a lot of cars like parked in the driveway in in, in the grass. I'm like, I can't tell the Uber driver to be like, um, can you wait? Or uh hold on, can I book another trip? Like he was trying to go, he was trying to dash. I ended up coming to terms with I was not gonna be able to get the rental at all. And I mean, like that I was supposed to leave Christmas Eve and this was literally christmas eve so i was like okay this is like going horrible it was christmas eve couldn't get a rental everything was just crashing down but i remembered i remembered how i met this guy in the club and um we like clicked i don't know how i started talking to him about just like what i was going through something like that i don't know it somehow car ended up getting into the conversation he was like oh i have an extra car because he's telling me how he just got a divorce and he has like a, a car that he's trying to get rid of he wants to sell it but he might lease it to someone he's like oh my gosh i could lease it to you like how you came to the strip club and i'm trying to finesse you and you just ended up trying to finesse me about like renting out a car but i felt like he was genuine you know what i mean so he's like yeah you know like could you do like 500 a month i don't know why the 500 came from 
I don't know. I don't know nothing. Honestly, in my mind, I was like, mm, yeah, uh, yeah, we'll talk about it when that time comes. You know, if I really feel like I really, if you're serious, you know, I did not really take this serious, you know, of this proposition. Now, this was like, uh, like maybe two, three weeks before Christmas. So when I exhorted all of my options, I was like, okay, oh my gosh, we're going to call this guy, what was his name? I'm going to call this man Denzel because he was grown and a little cute, but so Denzel, we're just going to call him Denzel. So I'm like, oh my gosh, Denzel. So I messaged Denzel and I'm like, hey, like last minute, like this is Christmas Eve, mind you. Christmas Eve, I messaged this man, I'm like, hey, Denzel, um, you know, um, remember about how he spoke about like you letting me possibly like lease your car? What if I pay you that $500, right? Just for two days. Why? I don't know. I was just in like, oh my gosh. And this is why you should never make a decision when you are overwhelmed with any type of emotion. Whether it's <coughs> desperacy, like how I was, or whether it's anger, whether it's happiness, like you never want to make a decision when you're too overwhelmed with an emotion. So I offer him five hundred dollars because I just wanted I wanted to present him an offer he just could not say no to. So I said, what if I just you know pay you just to rent your car for two days? Like I'm in a dire situation. I'm trying to go get my daughter. So he ends up saying yes. I go to him and get the car. Actually, he comes and picks me up. And um, he takes me to his house and I get into the car, whatever, we talk about, you know, he tells me everything and just how like, oh, this is such a trusting situation, you know. Which I mean, it is, granted it is, you know, cause he doesn't really know me and he's about to like, let me borrow his car and drive, you know, where, but, but like, I'm paying you for it. And like, what am I gonna do, steal it? And, but still, I understand like anything could happen, I can get into a car accident, et cetera, et cetera. So I get the car, get in the car, I drive, straight there well i go home and like grab some stuff some change of clothes some of that some presents for my daughter and i go straight there i drive straight there so i get there oh my gosh why when i get there i actually made a pit stop to an old club that i used to work at because i wanted to play some pool and i really wanted to try to see if i can find if i could see any like old friends um yeah th there was no old friends i went i played like one round of pool but while i was there like i you know i'm letting her dad know like hey i'm like i'm 30 minutes away or i'm an hour away you know what i mean like i'm this far away um you know i was communicating with him the whole ride there about like an hour out he stopped answering um and um yeah i'm like hey make sure you get her ready i'm this far away then he's like, oh uh, yeah, so like we kind of like already like made plans. Like my mom made plans, whatever. This man is but this man is a bum. Like this man is such a bum. He's like 30s, in his 30s, lives with his parents, you know, has never had a place of his own. So he's like, Yeah, my mom like kind of already made plans uh, uh to like uh do some Christmas stuff. So like it's just like let's just play another time. Like, can we just do another time? And I'm like, okay, like, okay, this man is playing with me. I was thinking about, like, going through the whole process of, like, calling the police because we don't have anything in custody, you know. But um, I ended up just getting, like, really defeated. I just go to my cousin's house, okay. So I go to my cousin's house, of course, empty-handed with the greatest gift ever. Empty-handed with not my daughter. So I'm just kind of still, like, a little frustrated or whatever. I, you know, hang out with my family and stuff like that, but I'm just ultimately very sad because I don't have my daughter with me. So, and they had so many presents for her and they were just so excited to see her. So, it was kind of like Christmas was ruined. So, basically that night, like, of course, you know, it didn't align for me to get her because of her father. So, I ended up, you know, my, my cousins ended up leaving, going back to where they reside. And, you know, my uncle and aunt offered for me to, like, spend the night, you know, just leave in the morning. But I was just really sad. And, I like, when I'm upset and when I'm sad, I like to keep my mind occupied. So I was like, you know what, no, I'm just going to try to make it back, you know, here. And, you know, I have the car for the day. I'm just going to drive to work and work. You know what I mean? So I drive all the way back, you know, to where I live. I go to... Um, the place that I work was working at at the time. It's Christmas night. They was talking about like $220 to work. 
I'm like, wow, I guess crack is on sale because y'all must be smoking it. Because I'm not paying $220 to work. Like, I don't, that's just, oh, that's just not going to go down. They're like, oh, I mean, hey, what about $180? I'm like, still, I'm not paying over $180 to work. Like, if anything, it's Christmas. So y'all should be giving some Christmas discounts. Just to be real. So I decided to just stay and hang out. Huh. So, you know, I'm drinking and like, I'm like hoping like people will buy me drinks. Some people like bought me like a little bit of drinks, but people were being stingy. This is how I should have knew. Just go home. Like, go home. But, um, you know, I was just determined to like conceal, suppress my emotions. So, yeah. I stayed all night, ended up being at the end of the night, and you know, I'm chatting with some girls that I work with, fellow co workers. Now I'm in the dressing room at the end of the night, and um, these two girls are like, you know, talking about where they're gonna go. They invite me out. They're like, hey, let's go out to. We're gonna call this place. I'm gonna call it Club B. So they're like, yeah, girl, we're gonna, we're gonna go to Club B. Club B is still open, and it's like an after hour spot. So I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, you know, I've been to Club B, Club, Club B plenty of times. So yeah, you know, um, they're like, okay, like we're parked over here. I'm like, oh, I'm parked over there too. So they're like, we're right, like by each other. They're like, okay, just wait for us. Like you just follow us there. All right, I wasn't thinking about anything and saying follow me, you know, I'm just, you know, so I leave, I go in my car, I'm waiting for them to come out, they come out, they get in the car, two girls, so we're going to call these girls, um, Shawnee's and Olivia, okay, <laughs> oh my gosh, if you know, you know, it's just funny, so anyways, so we're going to call this girl, these girls, Shawnee's and Olivia, so, um, Shawnice is the one driving, okay, um, and Olivia is, you know, the passenger or whatever, and so I get, like, I see them get into the car, and they're just taking super long to just, you know, pull out and, like, follow, for me to follow them, so I pull up beside them, and I'm like, hey, like, are you guys ready to, like, go, um, y'all ready to, like, leave, <laughs> and, um, Shawnice is on the phone, with someone and she's like oh girl yeah my, my, my customer called me I'm trying to make some extra money you want me I'm trying to <laughs> make some extra money so I'm like oh okay she's like can can Olivia just park with you and I'm not thinking anything of it I'm like okay yeah sure you know hop in whatever so Olivia comes into the car we start heading to club B all right I'm determined to have a good night you know I mean we're like talking you know friendly conversation I wouldn't consider any of these girls my friends I really wouldn't consider anyone in the club that I've ever worked with really my friends, you know? But like, they're just people that I see at work, we would chat here and there, compliment me, you know what I mean? That kind of thing. So, we're on the way to Club B. About literally three minutes from Club B, why I said yes, who knows? Who knows? Who knows half the things I do, or why I do them, or why I agree to them, or why I stay in situate? Like, who really knows besides God, you know? Love you. But so three minutes from Club B, Olivia's like, oh no girl, huh, huh, we're not gonna go there, we're not gonna go there. Um, we're gonna go somewhere else, we're gonna go somewhere else. Like, um, yeah, we're not gonna go there. Whatever reason, I don't know if I was thinking that maybe that they were closed, they ended up being closed, or just wasn't gonna be, you know, anything. I don't know. I don't care for crowds or anything like that. If I wanna just catch a vibe, I just wanna catch a vibe, you know? So we end up heading to this new location and it ends up being like, closer than club b to where i live so like okay perfect you know um so we get a it, it, it's a house right when we pull up to this said house okay um it's not that many cars there so when we park she tells me just to park like in the driveway so and this is gonna this is gonna come into play like later on to this situation so I'm like the, I'm like close to the driveway, closest to the driveway to the right um, of the driveway. So we go inside, all right, we make a pack. We're like, okay, girl, let me go in here. We're not talking to nobody. We're just here to hang out. Like I got my eye on you. Like make sure we're, we're gonna make sure we're okay. We're both good, you know. We're not leaving without each other. 
like I'm not on no weird, you know, stuff like that. Cause you know, there's so many stories of girls like hanging out with other girls and like one leaving them, maybe another girl getting, or you know, or robbed, <laughs> robbed like me. <laughs> she was definitely way more intoxicated than me. Red flag number one. We go in there, we both stay before after walking in like, oh, we need to use the bathroom. So I'm like, okay, let's just go to the bathroom together. I'm on the way to the bathroom, okay? There's some people inside, maybe like seven people inside. I go to the bathroom, she said she's falling right behind me. She's just gonna like grab something to drink or something like that. I don't know, she, she was supposed to be right behind me. Um, yeah, I hear her like two minutes later saying like, man, I'm trying to find a bathroom, that's what she says. And I hear a guy say like, um, oh, okay, here's the bathroom, it's right here. And I hear a door open, and it definitely was not in the bathroom because I'm in the bathroom. So I wipe real quick, I get up, and I look, I open the door, and this like this man just brought her to a room, a room. And she's literally just sitting on the bed like this. Like, and I grab her, I yoke her up, and I'm like, yeah, no, like, to him, like, no, you're tweaking, you're weird, and I grab her, and I'm like, come on, let's go. So, we go into the common area, a lot of more people come, I would say definitely, like, over 20 people were there at this said house party, um, maybe even over 25, so, we're there, we're hanging out, okay, I definitely was not comfortable because just the vibe, the vibe of the city that I moved to is just, <clears throat> yeah, it's just not my vibe, it's not my scene, it's not my kind of people when it comes to people, um, I, I'm not going to say for everywhere, but just from what I've seen, you know what I mean? Um, I just, I'm a different breed, like, I, there's just no other way around it, I'm just a different breed, whatever. At one point, we're playing this game of, like, um, like, around the table, we're, like, drinking, and it's, like, this game of, like, oh, okay, you gotta say something that starts with, like, the letter A or B or C, like, going to the alphabet, and it's, like, I don't know, so many red flags, I just, like, that's just rip red flag. So we're just playing this game. This girl is on her live, showing me on her live. We're like hanging out, she's on her live, whatever. So this entire time when I walk in, okay, I have a purse on me. I have a satchel purse that looks like exhibit A. Um, the whole time it's over me, so it's over my body. Now in this said purse, my dumb ass had $400. It, in cash in this purse along with my keys my cards wallet keys to my house like everything keys to the car everything so that's that love that for me right at one point this guy gets so drunk he's like on the floor passed out his friends are like pouring liquor on his face um liquids on his face i'm just like yeah girl it's about that time to go <laughs> yeah it's about that time to grrr, slide like yeah this girl's like passed out on the, the couch at one point i'm like okay let's sober up and let's go as we're leaving right and deciding to leave is when some guys like all right telling people like okay everyone gotta go because they think the cops are about to come or someone's gonna call the cops on them or something like that i don't know so as I'm leaving and going outside, I don't know why a lot of people go outside as, as well. Uh -huh. And I just get bombarded. Like the moment I exit out the door, mind you, this girl is right by me. I just get bombarded. People start pulling on me and I don't know how, but now I'm in the midst of a fight. Like girls jumping, trying to jump me attempting to join me whole bunch of girls trying to fight me i don't know how i don't know why i don't know where this came from but like yeah i don't know where just girls trying to jump me as i'm just walking out so now i'm fighting with these fucking bamboos i'm like fighting left and right i just know like i get on top i'm on like literally i just feel a girl i have her by the the lace front i don't know how but i just feel so angered that i somehow got into a fight out of nowhere that i'm like no whoever i can is like getting this so i'm just going to this girl and i'm just i'm just eh, 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 wah, wah, wah. okay
okay when i get up i realize that my bag has been snatched off me for some reason the moment that my bag gets snatched off me everyone runs inside besides maybe like three guys like literally including olivia where was she who knows back inside I'm just like bamboozled because why am I now outside? It's just three guys out like here. And yeah, I don't know. So I immediately, I'm like, yo, where's my bag? I start tweaking. I'm like, where's my bag? Where's my bag? Where's my bag? Like, oh my gosh. So, <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, where's my bag? Like, I am tweaking right now. I'm like, yo, I'm not playing with you people. So I press 9 1 to the 1. I call 9 1 1. Because who are y'all playing with? Where's my stuff? Where's my bag? Like, y'all just try to jump me, like, out of nowhere and take my bag. And y'all just run inside. So, I'm calling the cops, right? I'm on the phone with the operator. With, with the operator. I'm on the phone with the operator. This man, one of the guys that are outside, this guy literally grabs my phone out of the hand, my hand. Snatches it out of my hand. And, like, I mean, he shot put it. Like, he, like it was, I, I know that man played football. He threw it and it just went. <laughs> like, that's what happened to my phone. One of the guys are like, yo, bro, what are you doing? Why are you tweaking? Why did you do that? He's like, man, she trying to call the cops. So now one of the guys goes, runs after my phone. Runs after my phone, grabs it, brings it back to me. My phone literally looked just like this. So this is literally how my phone looked. Or it looks like now. So that was completely damaged. It was completely damaged. Um, so now at this point, I'm like, okay, no. Like, what? Like, what's about to happen? I was just so scared. Like, anything really could have happened at that point. I, I let, my phone just got destroyed. I don't have my keys. My money is gone. My purse just got robbed. You know, the keys to the car were in that bag. You know, you know. So yeah, I'm like stuck and robbed and just got jumped. So I go to the neighbor's house. The first one doesn't answer. The second one answers the door. It's this like old white man. He's like, oh. I'm like I need help, I need help, like I need you to call the police. These people just jump me and rob me. I need the police. He's like, oh, oh that house? He's like, uh, yeah, we don't want no problems with them. Uh yeah, no, we have problems with them all the time. With them all the time. We, we just don't want problems with them. Uh sorry. Shut shuts the door on my face. Goes to the next house. Same thing. Yes. Yes. The third house is this short, fat, stocky, black, bald guy. He comes outside, this overweight, bald guy. You know what? Sorry, God. Let me not. Excuse me. Sorry. I apologize. Ooh. And he comes to the door and he's like, Man, yeah, no. They, he, he, he be playing basketball with my son. Uh, yeah, no, no, no. I can't do that. I need to play. What? What? What, sir? Like, I literally just got jumped and robbed. And I'm telling you, I need medical. Like, imagine someone getting shy coming to your door and saying, like, I need medical assistance. And the person being like, yeah, yeah, I don't know, man. I, like, he played basketball with my son, so, uh, yeah, I can't do that. Like, I, I, nah, I can't be an all like that. Like, I can't help you call the police. I know you're bleeding and shit, like, you just got shot, but, like, yeah, no, I can't do that. Like, what? So the wife comes up behind him and is like, Terry, call the fucking police. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? So they call the police. Whatever. The police end up coming, right? Basically, automatically, nothing could be done. You know, they can't get a search warrant out. They block off the street. And, like, as people try to, like, start leaving, eventually they start questioning them and not like, letting people leave. But, like, you can't really hold people, you know, hostage. Now, mind you guys, before the police comes and I'm on the second door to the white guy that's like, oh, no, I don't want no parts. I, don't, I can't do that. I see this girl. I see Olivia. I watch, right? And it's in a cul-de-sac, mind you, where this, at, where this is at. They're like in the brink of the cul-de-sac. It's a house and then it gets to the curb, right? It goes to the curb. So this is where the house is. I'm over here at the second door. Mind you, I'm parked to the right 
of the garage. So my car is very visible to me because I'm over here and it's like on this side. The lights flicker, beep, beep, on. Olivia goes into the car and grabs her stuff and then leaves with a guy. So yeah, the police come, um, they couldn't do anything. So basically they're like, okay, you know, since you know you went to this car from um, Denzel, we're gonna just, you know, do you know where he lives? I'm like, yeah, because I really couldn't remember his full name. Maybe, I don't know. But so, um, or I ended up figuring out, anyways, they're like, okay, so this is what we're gonna do. Basically, they, they put it as like a battery and like theft or something like that, but they couldn't really charge anyone at all because, you know, whatever. And there's no cameras, so of course, love it. So he's like, okay, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna go to Denzel's house, just gonna explain to him like that his car is here, keys are nowhere to be found and everything like that, but that it's safe and it's at this location and stuff like that. He's just gotta get it towed and stuff. And then we're just gonna bring it home. I'm like, okay, awesome. So we go to Denzel's house. How awkward, right? I knock on the door and a woman answers it. And I'm like, hey, yeah, like, uh, mind you, I probably look like a hot mess because I just got jumped and robbed, okay? I'm like crying my eyes out. I'm so mad. And I'm like, hey, yeah, is like Denzel here? And she's like, oh, who? She's like, yeah, no. She goes inside. Then Denzel comes out, like maybe seven minutes later. I was already walking away. I just told the cops, like, uh, I can't do it. You go talk to him. So he i'm just in this inside of the cop car behind behind bars you know just watching him like break the news to him and then i get taken home and dropped off so that was awesome luckily enough my neighbor brought me to work and stuff like that and like from there i was able to get some money so i had to order all new sets of keys and like car my car my cards and stuff like that and then someone tried using my card in orlando which was so funny so that was funny those are fun times love it and if you guys enjoyed like my suffering and my traumatic memories please give this video a like subscribe to my channel for more traumatic stories but hold on guys i i can't i cannot leave without saying this um i think what's really funny though is that like i, <laughs> I told a girl this at my job like what happened and Mind you, Olivia, the girl, she has like four kids. She has a, a four or five kids, no, four kids. And um, a girl made a joke and was like, damn, 400. That's 100 a piece per kid. 100 per kid. Yep, it sure was. But for anyone that has ever been wronged, you know what I mean? Just super violated like me. Um, I just have to like leave this on this note. Okay, this is Romans chapter 12, verse 19 through 21. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves. And now, mind you, I wanted to jump this girl. I wanted to spit her face. I wanted to shit in my hand and shove it in her mouth. Like, I wanted to do so many vile things to this girl. I, I, the thing is, is I had to work with her after. I seen her. Like, for a, a week or two, I did not see her, but then I started seeing her the way that i was just so angry the manager tried to like say like maybe try to get her fired or something like that but ultimately they couldn't do anything so you know and i guess like when the manager spoke to her she was trying to like prove her innocence but it ended up just proving her guiltiness <laughs> so yeah i wanted to do a lot of things but i decided not to and a lot of people were confused on why i did not but this is why I did not. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by doing so, you will heap burning coals on his head meaning make him angry do not be overcome by evil but overcome evil with good and i just say this to say that like this story in the next few that i'm gonna say a lot of people just do me so wrong for no reason and 
at the end of the day that's not on my conscience that's not the blood is not on my hands <laughs> like i didn't do this to them i didn't rob nobody i didn't jump them i didn't that's not on my conscience that's not on what i have to like everything you do in this life you will have to answer to god you have to <laughs> you know what i mean it doesn't matter how many months go by how many years go by like god does not forget the cries of the oppressed okay so all those people that were there and had taken part in that situation are going to have to, are going to, hey, he's got me at the end of the day. Vengeance is not mine. It is the Lord's. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please like and subscribe and um, comment if you want some more story times. Um, and as always, I love you, but God loves you more.